All right. Was gender-based violence given enough focus during the State of the Nation address? So we deliberate further with Rise Up Against Gender-Based Violence Director Mandise Kanyile and Oxfam South Africa Executive Director Lebohan Ramafoko. But first, let's hear what President Ramaphosa had to say about GBV last night. Crime against women and children remain a deeply disturbing feature of our national life. In November last year, we held a second presidential summit on gender-based violence and femicide. To assess what progress we have made in implementing the National Strategic Plan, which, adopted, which we adopted as a comprehensive, effective and united response to this pandemic. One of the great successes of our effort to fight gender-based violence is the extent to which social partners have rallied around the national strategic plan. In January last year, I signed into law three pieces of legislation that afford greater protection to survivors of gender-based violence and ensure that perpetrators are no longer able to use legislative loopholes to evade prosecution. We continue to improve the accessibility and functioning of sexual offences courts and expand the network of Tutuzela care centres. A key aspect of the National Strategic Plan is the economic empowerment of the women of our country. All right, we're joined by Pena Kodisang, Executive Director at Seoul City, Lebohang Ramafoko from Oxfam, South Africa, Executive Director. Uh, let's start, let me start with you, uh, Ms. Kodisang. So the President has uh, previously said that GBV is the other pandemic, um, uh, kind of the, the resources, the attention should therefore concur with what we saw during COVID-19. Now uh, we're hearing that much still has to be done given past rhetoric your response yeah and we were actually looking forward to hearing about the 13 billion that was much you know of the debate at the summit last year how we will get the 13 billion and how the nsp will be fully funded because like you say if we are intentional about preventing gbv and if we see it as a pandemic it needs to be meshed with the resources that we invest in preventing it and in responding to it. So we were shocked not to hear anything mentioned of the 13 billion that has been a discussion at the, um, at the summit. And also that, we you know, the president only focused on economic empowerment of women and not other intersecting issues, you know, how they'll be addressed because if we are intentional, we need to look at how socially we can uh, prevent GBV, how we, we tackle cultural and religious uh, influences in terms of perpetuating gender-based violence. So we were really disappointed, I must say, in how he delivered the speech and how he committed. In fact, there was no commitment. He was just telling us what has been done and we wanted to hear more about what is he committing so that when the finance minister comes in, we hear the breakdown of how all those commitments will be financed. Ms. Ramafoko, Oxfam's response? So, I mean, I think um, I agree with Sina, but I think what was very worrying about the speech yesterday was the fact that GBV was almost treated as a kickbox exercise and not seen as, for an example, part of what I felt was the president's major speech around energy and around electricity. And I wish that we don't treat GBV in that way, you know, as an aside issue where, like Tina says, it was very thin in detail. Now, anybody would know that, you know, you will front the issue of the economy when it comes to electricity. But women's lives are so much more at risk when there is no electricity. It affects how they move, it affects what they do, 
as major caregivers if they've got to leave and they've got to organize their, 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 their households, especially because 60% of households in South Africa are headed by women, it places a double burden on their lives. And I had wished that as we even reflect, because the bulk of the speech yesterday was on the current crisis, is that you don't then take GBV and you put it aside and you just tell us three or four things that you believe have been done. You don't really say, you don't give a gendered speech. Let me speak about it that way. You don't give a gendered sauna that says, while the country is reeling at this, while the economy is reeling at this, this is how it affects women. Because GBV is not only about to develop care centers, because those to develop care centers take care of women after the GBV has happened. But what are some of the things that the country does to make sure that you prevent GBV? Even with what is happening with the to develop care centers and what is happening with fighting and making sure that the cases get reported, we had very little around accountability and how we have really taken up accountability. And that, for me, was also part of the summit, that even the summit itself felt like a tick box exercise where the ministers who were there acknowledged the problem, but they were not taking accountability for their own systemic failures. So I think that is, for me, what was, you know, said about it. When, including when there is the budget speech, when are we going to have a gendered approach where we recognize that in a country with as big a problem on GBV in South Africa, our, our speech from every leader is gendered. Whether you speak about transport, whether you speak about energy, whether you speak about businesses. I mean, how have ECD centers been affected, you know, by, you know, the energy crisis? How have women's ability to make a livelihood you know, and we are talking about women in the informal economy who are selling food, yeah. who basically can sell food. How have they been? Please, can we stop treating GBV as an appendage? I'll, I'll mention it and I'll mention two or three things without detail, but it won't be the center. When more than 50% of the population that you, 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 you know, you are a president over are living in fear. Yeah. You know, how um, are you not seeing that as something that you spent in everything that you say? Uh, you've raised a, a whole lot, uh, saying it was a tick box exercise. Ms. Kori Sang, let me come back to you. Given what has been done, are we seeing the benefits thereof? So the president spoke about those changes in law and, and we were pushing for those changes in law. Um, legislation uh, to get more people behind bars, uh, to firm up prosecutions and protect the survivors. So when the Tutuzela care centres come into play, are the survivors at least being protected? We only have less than 60 Tutuzela care centres across the country. That is already telling in a country where 50 percent of your population is women who are under siege who are under attack you only have 66 cent less than six uh, 60 centers sorry to take care of them when they've been violated so firstly it says your response is also not well resourced you know to cater for the need on the ground because we have we are not fully addressing uh, prevention we are not dealing with prevention so at least our response should be enough to cater for everyone. Two, we have a backlog of uh, DNA, and even this ele uh, electricity crisis, energy crisis, is exacerbating the, the, the backlog on DNAs because you know they cannot continue with uh, testing, collecting the evidence. There's a, there's a, there's a mess also with how the evidence is collected. So when you look at all those issues. You know, it tells you that women continue to be put on the side. And that is why Lewis is right in saying it becomes a tick box exercise because we are not fully investing in implementing the NSP as we have laid it out. We, we, we only have, you know, a few years 
to see the results of the NSP. A lot of work has gone into that. All the different pillars of the NSP are equally important. So to single out economic empowerment says we really don't understand what we are doing in this country. We think if 3,400 women-led uh, enterprises have been capacitated, we've done enough. Again, I repeat, we, we have 50% of this population being women. We're only talking about a fraction, not even 10% of that population where you say you are intentional about meeting the needs of the women, making women fully enjoy what is enshrined in the constitution of the country. So our country is failing and it was you know, evident in the speech that the president yeah. gave that we are failing and we are we are not even willing to account for our failures in as far as women are concerned in this country. And, and I mean, the DNA backlog is a crying shame. That was something that could be uh, dealt with practically. The, the results are, are devastating. The Western Cape saying that uh, more than 200 violent cases, including rape, sexual assault, attempted murder and other contact crimes, uh, and this was reported in December, was struck off the roll because of incomplete investigations linked to that backlog. Unfortunately, we have to leave it there. Uh, but thank you for your views. Not very impressed with the response to GBV. That was Pina Kodisang uh, from uh, Seoul City, Lebohang Ramafoko uh, Rama uh, from Oxfam, uh, South Africa Executive Director. Now, a search and rescue operation is underway near Mbombela in Mpumalanga after four people reportedly went missing in rural Nkomazi. Flooding has left a trail of destruction in the area, with rivers overflowing and some bridges underwater. Heavy rain continues to fall in most parts of the province's low felt region, cutting communities off and trapping people in their homes. Most areas remain inaccessible, with bridges submerged and roads damaged. These conditions make it difficult to continue the search for missing persons. Among the four missing is a grade 12 learner, Andile Mkachwa. He was last seen trying to cross an overflowing river on Sunday. Rescue teams have been dispatched to assist trapped communities, but the persistent rain is hampering their efforts. People have been warned not to attempt to cross the rivers, streams or bridges. All right, uh, with that, I mean, rain across the country and poor, uh, let's look at a weather report.